ANA eLearning Academy is brought to you by CDN Graysheet, a trusted source of rare coin and currency valuations since 1963. First of all, happy summer seminar, and thanks for joining our e-learning presentation today. Um, we are going to be covering counterfeit detection of key dates and mint mark. Oh, excuse me. No, that's next Tuesday. Pardon me. Today, we're going to be covering Chinese made counterfeit coins. Um, I'm Andy Dickus. I, I work here at ANA headquarters in Colorado Springs, and I'd like to thank you for joining us. I'd also like to thank the Gray Sheet for their continued support of this e-learning program. For those of you who have been out here to Colorado Springs for summer seminar, you know that it's just not the same uh, uh, doing this online, but we're making lemonade from lemons right now. And we hope to welcome all of you next year to summer seminar. If, uh, if you're not familiar with that program, it's two weeks of immer immersive numismatic learning out here in Colorado Springs and it's quite an experience. Today we have Brian Silliman joining us. Uh, Brian is a longtime instructor at Summer Seminar in counterfeit detection. Uh, he also worked at the AMA uh, a long time ago as an authenticator and also at NGC as a grader. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Yeah, this is a different way of doing summer seminar, that's for sure. Um, you are going to get, uh, as we did the gold class yesterday and then the class we have next week, you're going to get uh, what would normally take four and a half or four days uh, packed into two hours or actually probably less than two hours because we're going to save some room for question. We, we have the disadvantage of not being able to do hands-on coin examination. Um, so uh, we, we are going to pack in a lot of information, but I, I do highly recommend you come to Summer Seminar because you will be able to network, uh, even buy and sell coins, uh, and you'll have access to uh, the classes plus the bull sessions and the lectures and the special presentations and uh, the, the Belgian waffle machine in the college cafeteria. Highly recommend all of that. Um, but we're going to look at Chinese-made counterfeits, which are really one of the hot topics in numismatics now, and for good reason. Um, I used to work at the ANA as their authenticator. Then I went on to NGC and, and NCS uh, for the conservation, and then NGC. And then I came back out to California after about 10 years and went to work for Panda America. So I went out into the Asian coin market and, uh, and had firsthand experience with not, a, not only the mint, some of the mints out there, private, uh, but also a lot of counterfeit material. Um, the, the counterfeit uh, uh, here are some, some pictures that we'll, we'll just go through briefly as I kind of introduce it. These are, these are pictures that were famous and they would show up in Coin World and, and a number of websites that shows you a, a primitive kind of back alley setup uh, where they're actually making uh, the coins here. You can see it uh, might be British coins. Um, the, you know, this looks like some dollars. Um, the Chinese counterfeiting situation is a lot more complex than I think most people realize. Um, most of the people that are making the actual coins probably don't see themselves as counterfeiting. Um, uh, there's a very can-do attitude there where, oh, I can do that. Um, and, and, and it applies to, to coins, uh, purses, you know, Louis Vuitton purses, uh, and, and even automobiles, um, uh, they, 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 they've, they've counterfeited some Bentleys. Uh, uh, so there is, there is that um, odd can-do attitude. And they, they don't, you know, they're, they're making these coins, but they're, they're going to sell them for less than a dollar a piece. Uh, it's the, the secondary market uh, where things become... Uh, problematic. 
Um, but you, you likely you do have people who are out there counterfeiting to deceive people. But a lot of these manufacturers, they they're not going to make enough money to uh, to make to produce these coins because the presses and the facilities that they have uh, by selling one off counterfeits. They're they're just doing bulk sales and they end up in shops like this. Um, or you see a bunch of half cents and, and large cents and even some Indian cents. Um, so they're, they're relying um, on just making quantity of this stuff. And a lot of it, you know, the people walk into these stores to see this stuff and they think, oh, they're, it's all good luck. But it's this, the secondary market, where it becomes a problem. Uh, I, uh, years ago, when you could actually find this stuff pretty easily on eBay, I bid on uh, a few counterfeits to add to the ANA's counterfeit sets. And as soon as I put the bid in, somebody, you know, because you could see the email, uh, the, the, who the bidders were, so I started getting emails from secondhand people who were offering me uh, early dollars in fake NGC and fake PCGS slabs. Uh, but they were charging 200 a piece, whereas these coins were going for, uh, you know, a buck uh, or less on eBay uh, raw. Uh, this may have been one of the images that somebody sent me of the coins they were willing to sell, but they were looking 150 to 250 a piece for coins that were worth thousands of dollars. And that was the secondary market. The original manufacturer is just making cool stuff. You know, that's how he views it. And then he's selling it in quantity. It's the secondary market where things go out of control. And you can see here we have an early dollar. We have this. Uh, what's it's a Chinese piece, it looks like. Um, I can't even make it out from here. China as well. Just stacks of this stuff. So basically how they're doing this, and we're also gonna look at the counterfeit slabs right now, um, is, is quite simply, uh, they take an image. This is the latest generation of stuff is how they're making it is they, they take an image off eBay heritage um, and even the US Mint, and they put it into a computer, a graphics program. They might enhance it. Uh, they might change dates. Um, uh, so they don't have to scan every single year of the coin. They scan it and then they, they have the first date and then they remove the date and they draw in the second date they want to do. So they could go 1878, 79, 80. And all they're doing is changing the date on the series. We'll see examples of that. So they take the image, they run it through the graphics program, then they send it to something like a CNC machine, which will engrave the dies. Then they pull the dies out. They make some adjustments to it. Um, you know, they might, if it's a proof, they might, uh, they tape it off and then remove the tape over the design and they etch it. Um, and then they're ready to begin striking. Then they've made the coin. Then the secondary market uh, adds the holder to it. Now, looking at this, uh, it, you know, they, they don't, they, they're, they're not concerned about grade. They try to approximate the same look. Um, so frequently you look at the coin and the coin does not match the grade of the label. Um, but here's some uh, early, earlier slabs where they didn't have as many security features and it was a little bit easier to fake it. So you'd really have to go off the overall appearance of the coin and the grade and then compare that to the label. Now, NGC and I believe PCGS as well, they image everything that comes in. Uh, but on these, you'd have to look at the, the, uh, the hologram on back, which has gotten much more sophisticated. The, the, both of NGC and PCGS have done a bang up job on, on improving their security features. Uh, uh, and it's a matter of keeping the counterfeiters, keeping up with them. Uh, but as with anything, there's no exact copy, which is you know, what we're relying on for detecting the coins as well as the holders. Um, here we have uh, the, the genuine label and, and the fake, uh, or hologram, excuse me, which is heat stamped into the uh, coin. You can't go too much off of the color 
because the, the lighting, the way it's hit, this is actually two images, not side by side. So they were taken at different times. So you get that um, difference in color. But the fun part is this, is going into the, uh, going into the, uh, the close-up of the coin. And uh, you should notice some slight mistakes. Renolage, I believe, would be how you pronounce that. Um, Nunismatist guild or Nunismatist guild. Um, yeah, there's there's always going to be some spelling mistakes. Uh, uh, Integrity uh, being uh, a pretty good example of that. Um, these still pop up on the market because unfortunately they had gone into collections and now they've come back out. Uh, over time, NGC has gotten much more sophisticated with their label and their hologram. And uh, then we can do a little comparison here. Um, this one was being shopped around a Long Beach show uh, a couple of years back or a few years back. And it was a new version of the NGC label. This was uh, the label they were using when I was there. And uh, it even fooled one of the customer service people at NGC uh, when, the, when it was shown to them. But if you look at it, you got three distinct lines of NGC and the, and the uh, scales. On uh, the counterfeit uh, holder, you have just the uh, kind of a blurred hologram sheen that goes all the way across. Um, so now, We'll look at a few coins. Um, this actually, I believe, came off of AliExpress, which is a more of the retail version of Alibaba, uh, which is a Chinese answer to Amazon. Um, it's just a, an early <laughs> an early token. Um, one of the, the keys is that you notice the word copy. This is how they're listed on, on Alibaba or AliExpress. And notice it's uh, the same version of copy with the same debris in it, um, which is a pretty good indicator that if you bought this, it's going to come to you without that uh, word on it. Uh, that's purely so that it can be listed and sell and it uh, makes it look more legit. When you get this, it won't have the word copy anywhere on it. Uh, for authenticating something like this, it, it's, it's probably made in copper or, 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 or copper alloy. Um, there's going to be some, some flaws in the design, but most, most notably on these pieces is going to be uh, the edge. Um, which I'm going to give you an example of in a second. Here's a, a, a 32 uh, half cent. Uh, this is actually on the coin. It is raised. It's part of their die. Uh, as such, these pieces weren't uh, sold in large quantities because nobody wanted them with the word copy. We want to, you know, they, back then you wanted to see the word copy in the picture, but then when the coin arrived, you didn't want it to have the word copy on it. Uh, you're straight off the bat, it's got color issues. This is one that someone would uh, probably use a Deller's darkener on, which is a, a Vaseline that has sulfur in it. Uh, they would heat the coin a little bit, put the Deller's darkener in it, and it starts to brown up. Oh, or they'd leave it on their windowsill or carry it in their pocket for a little while, and then it'll start looking more believable. There's going to be issues with the date style, the digits and the date, because this is one of the ones where they got a good half cent, put it in the machine, and then they just, for each die that they needed to make, they'd write the digits on as close to the style as they could. So they could do the whole series off of one image or off of one file. Uh, or, or one scan. But going to this, you can see that the edge is quite, seems to be quite sharp, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, here's a, an 1800 uh, half cent, a uh, very smooth uniform. This would be a scan probably off of eBay or maybe a, a nice high resolution auction image. Our edges do appear a bit sharp. 
uh, when you pick up these coins, you, you can feel that they're counterfeit before you realize, uh, looking at the design and the detail and everything, that they're counterfeit. Um, and this is why. Uh, this is the edge of that. And all of the ones I've shown you so far are going to have an edge like this. And the simple fact of the matter is, is because they were struck in a collar. And these are ejection marks from the coin being popped out of that collar. Um, prior to you know, the, we didn't use, we didn't strike coins in college until uh, 1836. Uh, and yet we've got these, all these coins that date from what, 1792 through uh, like 1830, 1832 uh, that were clearly struck uh, in a collar. You may have differences in weight and stuff like that, but it's not going to be as evident on these coins. Um, moving, moving on to the, this half cent, again, it's a similar situation. Um, and you can see the edge is very pronounced and uh, struck with more pressure, obviously, but again, an 1807 coin struck in a collar. And this is just completely, completely new design. Um, this one, they would have taken the scan and then they enhanced it. The Looking at the digital image, it probably didn't look like a lot of this detail was gonna come up. So they actually went in and enhanced all the detail on the hair, even the stars, and then started, uh, ran it through the CNC machine, created their dyes and then started striking. And once again, they're striking in a collar, largely because they don't know better uh, and probably striking with a little bit more pressure and they're giving it a wire edge. It's gonna have those ejection marks on the edge. Uh, one thing uh, that's kind of fun to note is if you look at most of the coinage of the West, it's struck in coin alignment um, where uh, if you have the head up and you turn it, the tail is the tail is upside down. One side of the coin is up to the other side being down. Uh, China's coinage is typically struck medallic aligning. And I, and I think a lot of Asia has done that way. Uh, so when they make these counterfeits, not realizing that we strike in coin alignment, they frequently uh, make the counterfeits in medallic alignment uh, to where both sides are up when you rotate it. Um, now, if I came up a hat with a half cent and it was medallic alignment, uh, that's it's a red flag, but it's not a reason to, to condemn the coin right off. Uh, it, there is always the chance of a rotated die or something like that, you know, uh, uh, and, and having that. But I would want to uh, combine it with other indicators, uh, such as the rim or just the date style being wrong or it being a date that they never actually issued. Um, that is, is a huge thing. Um, so these are coming in. Uh, that used to be you could put together the sets, you know, a complete set of pretty much any U.S. coin uh, off of uh, uh, by buying it off of eBay. But uh, eBay's done a bang up job of eliminating it. Now you'll just get strays that you can pick up here or there. Um, this is off of uh, probably AliExpress or maybe even Alibaba because it looks like a bold price. Um, you can get 14 pieces for $12.78. Now, it used to be that you could probably get these and, and you could fool uh, anybody who didn't know uh, large cents very well. You could get it past them um, and you could certainly sell it on eBay individually. Uh, if you're thinking about going out there and buying them, do, don't. Uh, they are catching this stuff right and left and they are, uh, they are going after people. Um, you, you're probably going to lose your money. Uh, so stay off of, uh, don't buy this stuff off of Wish, don't buy it off AliExpress or Alibaba. Um, they are going after people on this and they have got a lot of people in the numismatic community helping them out now. Uh, I am uh, currently working with um, a Secret Service on a, on, on a, on a case out here um, uh, that is slightly different, uh, but there's another dealer who just helped out 
uh, out this way as well. Uh, and uh, and they are going after people. So you do need to stop uh, if you just don't don't think about doing it. I mean, just to be caught uh, and just to be investigated uh, is going to be an expensive affair. So don't uh, contribute to the problem. You know, uh, by by buying this stuff. But you can obviously you can kind of see that at twelve dollars and seventy eight cents, they're providing what they see as a service uh, and getting you all these coins that you probably couldn't otherwise have. Uh, but the secondary market, it's that guy that buys these and he puts them on eBay for 150 a piece or, or, or whatever is why uh, when it becomes a problem, which is what uh, Secret Service and whatnot are going after quite uh, diligently. Uh, it's a, it's a, a very complex uh the Chinese counterfeiting situation is very complex. It's not like some guy that's added a, an S mint mark to a 1909 uh, VDB and then turns around and, and sells it for a profit. It's a, quite a bit more complicated than, than the, that outright fraud. Um, but here's a, an interesting piece. It, it's it's kind of looks very weak. It has unusual surfaces. It's, the rim is, it looks a bit off. Uh, it's believed to be a, a one of the better Chinese fakes. Uh, I think it was probably one that came out of one of those sets of uh, uh, one of the complete run sets, um, simply because if you look at it, uh, the dates are slightly off, but what they looks like they did was they used a common reverse. Uh, so they got the, they scanned the obverse, got it where they liked it. Then they scanned a reverse. Then they went to the next year. They're like, well, we've already got a reverse. Let's use that same reverse die. And they went to the next year and the next year and the next year until they got up to 19, or 1857. And then here's that same die flaw. So they, they've got a, they're changing the obverse and they obviously the dates, I think the date's awful there. Um, and they're using a common reverse to get mileage out of it and cut their production because we're getting the same flaws on multiple dates. There's a flaws that are showing up. And then we have additional markers. So it's a common reverse and they just change out the offers over and over and over again. Uh, so they can do the whole series and then they can sell it to you for, what was that, $12.58 or something like that for 12, 14 coins, something like that. So, but that's also probably, both of those probably have ejection marks on the edge. Um, this, this actually came off uh, Facebook at one of the coin collecting groups. Um, this one was two days ago. And this guy has all these PCGS uh, slapped coins, uh, flying eagles. And we'll take a closer look. And I uh, don't know how many of you are familiar with the diagnostics for the 1856 flying eagle, but the five has a very characteristic style. And that ain't it. Uh, all of these are... are, are secondary market fakes and the coins were probably just bulk bins of flying eagles and then they either got brought here or they were sold online and then uh, somebody in China who's making uh, the counterfeit slaps paired them up and then they were sold out here uh, and now they're being sold uh, as genuine pieces for significant premiums um, which isn't and you can look on these two, obviously most notable is 64, 62, 64 plus. This is our 60, this is a different 62. And uh, they all look like they're in the XFAU range. And if you were able to punch in this cert to look at a coin on PCGS's website, like NGC does, you're probably gonna see the number doesn't exist or the coin is quite different. But here's a, a, just a, the base. This is how they're, they're, they're made and they're thrown into bins and then 
then uh, occasionally they get put in holders and sold that way, or they come out uh, if they're sold as a set uh, and they look like this. And then someone here as part of the secondary market browns them up, antiques them, uh, artificially colors them, uh, maybe carries them around in their pocket to kind of circulate them a bit and get them looking much more believable. But what you have is they scanned the obverse and reverse, and then they erased the dates and they did all three dates. Uh, and this is, uh, this, I mean, if you had to describe this, it would be uh, a date alteration, a counterfeit of a date alteration. Because um, this looks like it's a genuine, uh, as far as the design and the elements, but the date style is completely wrong. So they, they've drawn in the date after the fact so that they didn't have to scan a whole bunch of coins. Because each scan they do, they have to work on, on the computer. So if they can get one good scan of the design, then they can just add the dates quickly and easily. This is an, an, an example of the antiquing. You can see that the surface tension prevented it from, uh, it was probably a liquid or a gas, uh, prevented it from sticking on the coin as well. But they probably put it on the coin and then they wipe it off to give it that antiqued, uh, not unlike staining um, staining wood, where you wipe it off after you've put the initial coat down. Uh, Deller's Darkener does produce a similar look like that if you heat the coin and then you put the sulfur impregnated Vaseline on it. Another example here, they've, they've done the scan. It's, it's not a very good one. They didn't probably didn't go back and enhance the dyes. Uh, and, and it may have been some out of alignment when they were cutting the dyes or uh, when they hardened the dyes. Uh, we got some extras here, uh, extra metal, some impairment there. They've got a toothy separation. That would be a loss of relief. Uh, a toothy separation on the denticles. There's, there's actually metal between the denticles on the host coin. But when you make a copy and you lose relief, you get that separation. And here they've just drawn in the date. The date style on this is nothing uh, compared to, uh, not even close to the original. Now, these counterfeits come across in, in, in what I, I call this gener generations. Some people call them types. Uh, I kind of view it in generations because uh, you can see kind of how they evolve. And then every now and again, in a generation, you get garbage, uh, which is probably some new people getting into the game. Um, but uh, and, and keep in mind, the guys that are doing a lot of these counterfeits now in China are they are big, sophisticated operations. They are doing, you know, part of the day they're doing ingots and, and, and bullion pieces and tokens and, you know, butterfly coins, dog coins, lunar coins, all this kind of stuff. And then they also do this. So they have a full run of different production lines that they're doing. And it's a facility. Uh, one facility that I went to that I suspect probably does this uh, does counterfeiting uh, as part of their production line. Um, I mean, it's, it had a, a huge, four huge presses. It had a dye room. It had the scan room, the, the room for cutting the, the, uh, the dyes. And it had a dorm for the workers where they lived. Um, and it was quite the operation. And I, I, when I was there, he was doing ingots and different things like that. But he, there was some stuff he just did not want uh, me to see and he kind of guided me away from looking at the stuff that was sitting there, which kind of led me to believe I was probably doing some of this stuff. Um, but here you have a, a very nice original, uh, good color with the wood grain modeling on it uh, of an 1877. And then you here you have one that has an unusual look. Um, so it does help to, to know your coins. Um, this has a very rough service, tremendous loss of detail. So maybe they did a scan and it just wasn't a very a great scan and they didn't bother enhancing it or they uh, to, to bring out the relief. I mean, a, a scan is 
uh, for in some cases just going to be a picture. So anything they want raised up, they have to raise up in the in the design program. It does look like they took a scan of a genuine coin because that date style is correct. But all of this, none of this, these flaws in the letters uh, should be there. And the and there's no uh, design, no uh, fine details in the feathers. Um, move on to the next one. Again, you can see tremendous loss of detail. Um, the ends, uh, most likely, um, they didn't. They they had scanned an earlier year of uh, of the uh, the uh, Indian scent, and they just kept using that dye. Uh, they didn't bother with the reverse because they didn't know that on a 77, the ends are, the tops of the ends are weak. Uh, they, they slide into the field. So they most likely didn't realize that what they'd done or that they needed to do anything or they, they just didn't care because they're not, they're just making an 1877. They don't care whether it's correct. Uh, they wanna get it as close uh, to it as possible. Um, so that's, that's one of the major flaws on that that we can tell. Now, to clarify on counterfeits, well, while we're on it, um, it is illegal, uh, despite what people like saying, it is illegal to own, uh, to, to knowingly uh, own, uh, buy, or sell a counterfeit uh, a U.S. coin. Uh, pretty much all of these U.S. coins are still legal tender, which makes uh, buying, selling them, uh, or owning them, even if it's for your reference collection, uh, illegal. Um, uh, there, there has been an instance, uh, a couple, uh, where a, a dealer uh, has uh, made someone angry, and, and that person said, well, you know, he has a black box, and in that black box is a whole bunch of co counterfeit coins, and he was paid a visit. And I'm not sure what happened, but I know he did uh, have a, a, a quite a bit of grief for quite a while uh, as a result of having a reference collection. Um, so generally, the best idea is just, okay, I've got it, damn it, I blew it, okay, and then get rid of it. Uh, and the best way to do that is to donate it to the a because it goes into their permanent collection and it's used in classes like this. And the ANA can keep uh, a collection of counterfeits. The Secret Service did show up once and try to take it. And then they realized that we actually helped them out so much by taking, uh, by educating people that it was better in, in, in ANA hands than it was in Secret Service hands. Okay. So the 1909S, okay, a key date. So they're gonna have to make sure they get both the date and the mint mark right, and they did neither. Uh, if you look on this, the date styles are wrong. The, the, it's not a very well-made counterfeit. Uh, they may, may have got the scan right, but they didn't get the detail right. Uh, yeah, they struck it with a lot more pressure, thinking that would help bring up the design, which it didn't. Um, um, and then if we look at the back, the, the mint mark, uh, it looks like it's probably about the right position. Uh, and it's something that approximates the, uh, they, they at least got the openings right. Uh, the rest of it is, is, is just awful. It's a snake ass. Um, now, uh, if you remember um, that Washington piece, the word copy on it, Same word, copy, same debris in it. Uh, this one showed up uh, on, the, uh, on, on one of the same sites. So it's the same manufacturer. And uh, it's not a, a half bad looking coin. Um, it, it does have uh, some significant uh, uh, significant issues. Feel free to comment uh, on, uh, on that in the chat or the Q&A as to any significant issues you see on it, and we can bring it up later. 
I do see two questions. Uh, are these coin shops approved by the Chinese government or do they not try to regulate? No, the, 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 those, all the, 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 those pictures I showed you of the, the, the coin shop, they're selling artifacts, the fake artifacts and, and, uh, and, um, I mean, all sorts of stuff. There's miniature terracotta soldiers, uh, uh, the spade money, all of the Chinese uh, round coin, square hole things. It's it's they're gift shops, uh, not unlike you would find in, in Chinatown in, in in some large cities. Uh, they're gift shops selling these as as replicas, novelties, uh, souvenirs, good luck pieces. So it's seen as harmless. It's a different mindset. They don't understand it quite the way. Uh, we do. They, they have a very strong coin market uh, with very sophisticated collectors, but then they also have this um, souvenir market, which is why most of the stuff is made naively and, 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 and innocently, I guess you could say, but that secondary market gets hold of it. And then they're, uh, uh, then it becomes a, a significant problem. So it's, a, it's kind of a matter of intention. It's a, they're produced well-meaning, and then they're, they're, after they're sold, it's, it's, it's uh, somewhere malicious. Um, do the electric type coins produced by Robert Reddy of the British Museum qualify as counterfeit coins? Um, well, they, they're, they're British coins. Uh, um, I, I, they would see the United States also has produced, uh, the Smithsonian places like that have produced electrotypes for display purposes. Um, uh, they, they, technically they, they are probably considered counterfeits, but because they aren't being used in that way, and because they're in a part of, part of a museum collection, uh, uh, that they, they, they probably can get away with it without any issues. Um, keep in mind, when uh, counterfeiting, everybody, well, it's not an exact copy, or it, you know, the coin only has to be in similitude of, uh, they only have to resemble a US coin enough that uh, a reasonable person could confuse them and accept them as a genuine piece. That's how, for example, Bernard von Nothaus and the Liberty Dollars, that's how he got in trouble. Had Statue of Liberty, uh, and instead of in God we trust, it said trust in God, it had a denomination and a date, and people, reasonable people, were confused enough to accept them, and that's how he was he got pinched for counterfeiting. They weren't exact copies of any U.S. coin, but they were in resemblance of and similitude of uh, enough so that a reasonable reasonable people were confused by them and accepted them. So that's something to keep in mind with all of these as well. Uh, and then that, and also when you're buying stuff like this off of eBay, uh, you know, obviously minus the word copy, there's an implied warranty that if you're buying a 1909 as Indian cent, that it is in fact a 1909 Indian cents. And I guess you could say those Chinese gifts you know, are a little bit similar to Bradbury Mint. Bradbury Mint, obviously, they know the law, so they're not going to make the same stuff, but uh, it's a novelty kind of thing. Yeah, in, in that sense. Okay, let's keep moving on. Okay, 1931. This one I always have been particularly fond of um, because it, it developed a nice color. Uh, it's a good looking coin. And that alone would be, you know, is a distraction. Um, you know, you see it, you go, hey, that's that's nice color. It's got some, it's got some red in it, it's got some brown, it's got some you know, the hues of red and purple and, 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 and maybe a little bit of a light green. And that all has combined to distract me from the fact, uh, and, and, and it didn't, they didn't do it on purpose. It's just the way it was. I mean, I, you can produce this color with acetone, uh, the, it, but it distracted the owner of this coin enough that uh, they missed the fact that it was an outright Chinese counterfeit. 
tremendous loss of detail. I, I don't even know how you would take a scan of a Lincoln scent and enhance it to where it would look believable without having that extra choppy look to it. Um, but they, 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 they get the, the date is all right. The mint mark position and style is correct. So they took it and they had a nice scan of a 1931S and then they made dyes from it. They just didn't enhance it enough. And then they struck it with more pressure to compensate, thinking that it's going to bring up the design. There we go. Here's a fun one, the 55. Uh, this is a, you know, the 55 double die is a very easy coin to authenticate. There's two lines of dot raised lines of dye polish underneath the T. This piece obviously does not have that. And they're usually struck and the dies are slightly rotated. Um, this, they would have taken an image uh, and then it looks like they enhanced it uh, quite a bit. Uh, and the loss of detail all in here, but uh, you know, they, they've got it somewhat correct there. Um, I'll go in for a closer look. Uh, it's going to be struck with too, too much pressure. There's not going to be any of that doubling on that uh, top part of the uh, rim that we we come uh, into contact with. Um, but you can see very strong legends, and they did. There's no enhancement here, so it, it's just got a very unusual look. Yeah, here's kind of a fun one. Now, if you note our word copy that seems to show up on the, uh, is identical on these, on this whole series, actually. Um, so all of these coins, uh, they probably share uh, the common die and then they just went through and changed the dates. So they didn't have to scan every single year, scan and then enhance every single year that they wanted to do. So they just start drawing them in and, you know, and uh, then they just applied the copy graphic to each one and then they put them up for sale individually and in groups on uh, uh, Alibaba or AliExpress. And then they end up on Wish as well, although Wish seems to be cracking down on it as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you see it like this, um, it's probably, it's not going to come with that when you order it. And then, you know, if you buy a set of these and it gets stopped by customs and border patrol, uh, good luck. Uh, if you go into, to your Google, uh, what is it? Chrome or whatever. And you type in, you know, the, where you can see it, you can save search by keyword or something like that, put in counterfeit coins. And then you'll get notices for all of the stories on counterfeit coins. And you'll see an increasing number of stories uh, coming out of Chicago and other big cities of Customs and Boarding Patrol uh, ca catching, um, you know, packages. And then, and then they describe, oh, it was a package of six coins, 16 coins, you know, and, and you know, all these people are going to have something to answer for uh, when they get through processing it. Here, if you look at this one here, they did the scan and then they didn't enhance. There, so the, you know, the, the, the easy things for the computer to pick up were picked up, but the things that would require someone to go back inside and actually manipulate this in the computer, they just didn't do. They're just, they wanna fire out coins and they don't know enough about coin production to know how the, this weakness is going to appear on the final product. But once they're starting to strike and they've got people in the press working on it, uh, it's, it's, it's already in motion and they're not going to stop to do it. Another version. Uh, this is, yeah, it's same date, different version. You can see the date style changes a little bit. Uh, this one's a little bit more pronounced, but still a weakness in it. They're probably using the same reverse die. Now this, this, uh, Actually, the next bunch of coins uh, is, uh, were uh, part of, of a set a collector put together. Uh, uh, interestingly, uh, uh, I don't know the background on the set, but it had both genuine and counterfeit coins in it. Uh, these uh, produced in a white metal. Um, if you're not familiar with the three cents silver, um, it, could, it could get you. Um, 
I suspect this this collector may have known what he was doing uh, and knew that and just bought them all because um, he did have a set of them. This is this is part of the generation of, of Chinese uh, fakes that was coming out around 2010. And they vary in their in the quality of their production. The dates are all uh, do appear to all be added after the fact. We're looking at our 1863. This is 2010 and later. That could fool quite a few people, except for the date. The date's awful. But they did develop some toning. This might be, I would imagine these are probably sold individually. Uh, if they were sold as a set, they would all probably look uh, more, uh, have the same color. Now, these, I think, were probably sold as part of a set, although the collector did have genuine pieces mixed in with these, and I don't think he knew. Uh, he may not even know the one, uh, one from the other. But uh, this is uh, probably not nickel. It's probably a, a lighter uh, white metal. Um, these are going to have uh, good tonal qualities. They're going to they're going to ring because they are struck as opposed to a cast, which is going to have a tang or a thud. Again, they're writing in the dates. Go back, circa two thousand ten. Then they're writing in the date. You see how horrible the dates are. They're they're closer with this one, but they're so far off on that one. But the rest of the coin looks great. So this is usually, I mean, when you pick up a coin like this, you'll look at it, you'll see the date, and the date jumps out at you. So, and this is a, does appear to be a business strike, uh, but this was a proof only year. 1886, the coin itself is not bad. The obverse is better. The reverse is off. Uh, the date is Forget about it, not even close. And this is a mint state, and it is a proof only year, circa 2010. Moving up into our shield and raised nickels. Okay. They, for some reason, they may have done some dye polishing. Here's a flaw in their production. Uh, does have kind of an off look to it as more of a silver than a nickel look to it um it's going to be struck with more pressure it's circa 1910 part of the same group I'm looking at the dates let's see how the dates change and this is the 1866 circa 1910 uh, some of you may know what's wrong with it right off the bat. It should have rays on it. It doesn't. They paired it with the wrong reverse die. Now this go this one goes this one predates the ones we were just looking at, and this gives you a good idea of the loss of relief that I was talking about, and excuse me, also the drawing in of the digits. Let's so we got a couple of questions. Let me take a quick look at those. There may be some that were struck in silver. Um, at least that's uh, rumors I've had. I haven't seen them. Um, some may be silver plated. Uh, some may be silver plated after the fact. But generally, they're usually going to use a base metal. They want something that's going to look like gold or silver uh, when they're making them. What happens after the fact is something completely different. Now, there may be people, uh, some of these counterfeiters, uh, some of the people that are making the Chinese made fakes that actually want to, to, to counterfeit the coins. Um, but because they're doing it in quantity and they're making their money on bulk, I, I don't think the intention for that much. They're, they're looking more at production and mass sales as opposed to individual fakes. Um, the Lafayette Washington commemorative dollar. Uh, yeah, they're, they're available on uh, Alibaba and AliExpress. Uh, uh, so they are, they are making, they are making those fakes. Um, they tend to be pretty flat and missing a lot of, uh, of detail. 
Uh, now going back to this one, this is an earlier, um, slightly earlier. This one probably goes back to about 2000. Um, and what, what, what I like on this one is, is what, what, what we call lake effect. Okay, the coin is digitally scanned and then adjusted. Uh, and then it's sent to the, 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 mach the engraving machine and uh, the lower design elements, it wasn't adjusted enough. So this is the field of the coin, which should be the lowest part of the coin. Because they didn't bring up, and when they do the scan, the scan is basically a picture. Um, so they don't have any relief to it. So then they have to go in and give the coin its relief. So they raise the stars up and they raised the portrait up and they didn't raise it up enough. So the cheek and all these little areas that kind of look like a lake are actually the field of the coin. They weren't struck out. So they, they, they are the same level as the field of the coin. And then these areas, which were, were did rise up a bit, uh, uh, are raised from the coin and they have that etched surface. So what they did was they, they stick, scanned an image and it's in the computer and they enhanced and raised up as some of it or, they, or maybe in the computer they lowered the field uh, leaving the, the raised elements higher. Um, and then uh, they tape off all the flat areas, the field, and then they etch uh, the recesses of the die, which is the raised things on the coin. You can see the frost, that's from etching it. Then they remove the tape uh, that from the fields and then they start striking coins, but they just didn't give the coin the relief it needed. Then because they're, you know, they've got their master without a date, they go in and, come on, there we go. They go in and they draw in the date and they get as close to the style as they can or they care to. Um, chances are they don't realize that anybody's going to notice. So they just draw in the date. Um, this is why frequently they, they do years that never existed. Um, but you can see the, the lake effect in here where this, this is the same level. And that's an earlier generation and you don't see that too much anymore. Here's that granularity. Here's a probably a flaw from the original coin, uh, but the graininess of the devices. So they did etch a lot of it. Some of this, there, there are thoughts that this is part of the engraving process too. I think you can find both instances where they've etched the dies and also where it's part of a spark type engraving process. Uh, they they they're resourceful. There's there's a well, they they find they figure out what they need to produce and then they make it with the available machinery. So that's why you do see differences in production and striking. I mean, there's back alley striking like you saw in those pictures, those famous pictures I showed you from earlier. But then there's also actual factories that are making legitimate and not so legitimate coins and metals. Well, this is in here twice. And there's another picture. And there you can see the loss of uh, the denticles. You know, they rise up to a high point and then they slope down and there's metal in between. If you don't get the relief, you just get the highest points and then you get this 2C separation. That goes for US made counterfeits as well. A lot of your, your, uh, your gold, your, your Liberty had gold, the counterfeits of them are, are frequently have tooth identicals for the loss of relief. Ouch. And this was from the same collector. Um, and he did have genuine pieces mixed in with these fakes. So he either thought these were genuine or he thought uh, uh, the fake, the, the genuine ones were fake as well. Um, but you've got uh, just, it's an off design. If you're even remotely familiar, you should spot that it's just not right. Uh, it has the wrong look. Um, we've got other ones here, the, the uh, 18 over seven, uh, you know, 
this is a, a, at least an attempt at getting it, you, but you've got the top of the seven. Uh, if any of you are familiar with this one, the rest of it is just kind of too nice, but there's a die crack that runs here on the genuine one and this doesn't have it. So this one we automatically know is not real at all uh, just by the surfaces. This Indian looks a little bit more believable and he's uh, less artificially enhanced, but the, the attempt at the overdate was done by hand and it's absolute, absolute garbage. But pop it in a holder and all of a sudden it becomes a little bit more believable, right? We've got a few more questions. Some of these questions I'm going to answer after the fact because they don't apply to what we're at, the coins we're actually talking about. Uh, with the oh, look at that. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Uh, with the grainy devices and flat feet, could these be MD, EDM dies? Um, that is a definite possibility. Yeah, they could be like a spark erosion type process uh, where that's how the the dyes are made. Where carving or cutting, they're 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 etching it away. Uh, like, like, like I said, it's, it's, they decide what they, 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 what they want to make, and then they make it with the available machinery that they have access to. And some of it is quite sophisticated state of the art. And some of it looks like it's homemade. And some of it looks like it's probably obsolete machinery or, or not used that often, and they got a good deal on it. So that's why we run the, and some of them are still casting stuff and the cast counterfeits are just crap, but some of them are still casting uh, coins. Um, so it's with what's available and EDM is, is, is very likely on some of these. Uh, and then, then also they do etch the dies, uh, which I've seen them etching dies. And that does give that similar look as well. Aren't you supposed to be working, Joe? Um, but yeah, here's a, a fun one. The, it's basically the same one we just looked at, and they've put it in a holder. They've got the newest, I think this is the latest style of NGC label, and they have it in one of the very old, or similar to the very, oh no, actually this is one of the very old NGC holders. One, this is probably one of the original NGC holders, but remember, right, it doesn't have the bar yet. Um, yeah, I think this this one, this was one that showed up on Facebook not too long ago. And actually, if you didn't see the date, the rest of the coin looks somewhat believable. Same collector. So not even close. This, uh, this if, if, if this was going to enter the, the secondary market and, and they were going to attempt to make it look believable, they're going to probably clean it and let it tone up darkly um, so that it kind of hides a lot of that. But this, this is the latest generation, uh, which is not uh, very good at all. But same generation. They're also doing this, which is, you know, with a little bit of color and a little bit of shine, starts looking much more believable. Uh, keeping in mind that one of the hardest things to reproduce on the coins is the edge. Uh, these denticles are irregular. Um, you know, in some areas, they're very sharp. In other areas, they are um, very weak. Uh, sometimes they're even slanted a little bit. I believe this one is in metallic alignment. Uh, they try is so if both sides are up, uh, which is not how they struck those. Uh, but it's still that you can't use that as a sole indicator of the coin being bad. You have to combine it with the rough surfaces. And this one likely was some sort of EDM type CNC type machine. Uh, it could be something they even made up, um, but the the image uh, would have come from a from a heritage or an eBay or some nice high resolution image. Uh, here they they've written in the date. This one it looks like the date's pretty close, but this one they're now they're working on the rest of the series and they're just changing the dates as they go. Again, here, not, not, not too bad looking initially, but then as you get closer and look at it closer, it starts falling apart. Um, 
how are we doing on time? Okay. Um, as you get it closer, it starts falling apart. It's just not making it. So we go, uh, and the date is, is completely incorrect, and, there's a, and it's part of a whole series. Now this, well, hey, it's a 16D and a PCGS holder. It must be real, right? Yeah, no, not so much. Uh, it's actually a pretty good looking coin. Uh, actually a really good looking coin. But the, the problem would be that the, uh, the mint mark's not the correct position for that year. Uh, and also this is a little bit too uh, clear. Um, I mean, it's got a little bit more of a, a wavy and a frosty look to it when you have it in person. This one's a little bit clear, it kind of stands out. There's other issues with the hologram and the digit, but we really, you need to make sure you're always looking at the coin. Uh, and so when you go in to look at the coin, it's kind of a, a, a rough surface, uh, kind of a frosty uh, satin luster. And then the mint mark is not the correct position. Uh, or style. Uh, this is a, a similar version of that same coin. And you kind of see when you look at it, it's, it's very close, but it's just not there. It's not what would be uh, what we expect from a genuine 16B. And also a coin like this would be phenomenally expensive. Um, and you probably wouldn't find it in a little, too, a little uh, cardboard holder like that. It would already be certified. Um, a lot of these coins that you see and the other, when they're on eBay, they're, they're too good to be true coins. You look at it and you're like, wow, that's a great coin. Whoa, the price is phenomenal. And then when you look at closer, you go, well, there's a very good reason why uh, it's a problem coin or it is in fact a Chinese counterfeit. Uh, here again, they took the scan and they just didn't enhance it enough. You know, they're, mind you, they're, they're concerned with production. It's the secondary market that's concerned with deception. Uh, and so they just didn't enhance it enough. I mean, it's, it's got great flash, but it's a, it's a base metal. It's a white metal. Um, it's the weight's off. Um, it's not like a trade dollar where you can feel it, but it, it is off if you weigh it. And I believe it's also magnetic. A lot of these are magnetic, not all of them. And even within a, a series, uh, sometimes you'll get one that's not magnetic or, or you'll, or you'll get one that is magnetic and the rest aren't. It just depends. I, I almost suspect sometimes they're using scrap metal for planches. This one. Okay, this would fool quite a few people. This one would probably get it. One, you've got all sorts of damage around here. Um, it looks like you have significant die erosion, but the, the rim is, 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 the denticles are off. The, the surfaces are etched uh, and pimply. Um, initially I thought this was probably cast dies where they cast the dies and then started tracking, but I think this is probably another, uh, scan and, uh, CNC type machine product. But if you compare it to a genuine piece or, or even just a photo in the red book here, this, this should just have huge red flags and be enough for you to walk away. Something to keep in mind as well you are not getting paid to authenticate the coin. So when you see a coin, um, you just, you're making a decision whether to, to spend your money on it. So if you see something and you don't like it, or it makes you uneasy, or it, there's a red flag, listen to your gut and just go on to the next one. None of you are producing coins that rare that you couldn't find them at the next table or with another dealer or, or, or in the next month's advertisement in, in, in Coin World or whatever. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, most of the times when people show me a coin and I tell them it's not genuine, they say, oh, I had a, I had a feeling, I had a gut feeling, but I bought it anyway. Okay. Uh, here's like a fun example. I found this earlier today. Um, the word copy will not be on any of those coins when you receive them. Uh, if you order this, you are taking a real chance on getting in trouble. Uh, but yeah, this one uh, is on AliExpress right now as we speak. I just pulled this one off there to throw it on there to kind of give you an idea of the scope of this problem. Uh, you can buy these for $12. 33 pieces for $12.
and you get people that buy them and, and think that somehow they're going to get they're going to become real when they put them in their collection. Okay, the 32D and S, those are fun uh, when they're genuine uh, because the, the, the rule we have for those, if the mint mark looks bad, it's probably good. And if it looks good, it's probably bad. The mint marks sit on, on a kind of a bump. Uh, they sit in a little bit of a depression. They're heavy struck. They're very bold. They've got extra edging on them. So they look like they were added to the coin. When people add these, they take a, a filly that has no mint mark and it's a flat surface and they just, they pop a little mint mark on it. So the mint mark's very clean and it looks like it's part of the coin. One of the early episodes of Pawn Stars, if, if you're familiar with that show, they had a, a dealer come in, a, a, probably just some local guy, and he looked at a, a 32D or a 32S quarter and they took a quick look at the uh, on the camera and I noticed, well, it looks horrible. So that mint marks good. And he looked at it and he said, well, look at what's on the coin. It looks good. And, and he actually gave him the wrong advice. Uh, they bought the coin based off his uh, incorrect authentication. Because if you look at this, that mint mark looks right. It looks like it's part of the coin. It looks clean and everything. That's not how they look. The 32 DNS mint marks look horrible and they look like they've ever had it. So this is actually, they had a 32 and they just popped a D mint mark on it. Uh, and, or maybe they have a D mint mark reverse that they're using for the rest of the series. So they grab their 32 die and then they grab the D reverse. Then they grab the 33 die and they still use the D reverse, the 34, the 35, and they work their way through the series. And the mint mark's just incorrect. They probably use the scan from a different dated reverse and they've paired them up incorrectly. Okay, and this one, this is an earlier Chinese. This is what we kind of call the, uh, a new version. And, and then they've, they used to be very gray, and flat and, and not about PL. And then they came frosty and PL. Uh, and then now they've kind of gone back to more of a uniform satiny silver. Um, but this is just, it's looks, uh, it, I, you know, good luck finding a Hudson that looks like this. Uh, it's it's unnatural. Uh, why you don't have to be an expert on the coin, but at least having access to the pictures is going to tell you so much. Um, but these these are harder to come by. You don't see them very often. But they are doing the whole set of commems. Let's go through this. Now, trade dollars has always been a favorite of the Chinese, and uh, the vast majority of them are three grams light. Uh, these, uh, if you look at it, if, if once you're familiar with the trade dollar, which not that many people are, uh, you can tell just by looking at it. But then, uh, even if you're not that familiar with it, when you pick it up, you can feel that that they're light, and they run a full three grams light. Even the latest ones, this, uh, some I saw, what six months ago that uh, someone had brought out of China, carried them out by hand. They were brand new, spanking new. You know, they looked like silver eagles. They were that new. Um, they were still three grams light. So, you know, the manufacturers are going for look as opposed to weight. Uh, the, the, the diameters were correct, but the weight was a full three grams. Um, and these, they're going to have kind of more of a satiny finish than they should. Uh, you really want a more of a cartwheel. Uh, and then it does look like they almost tumble them sometimes. Uh, they do uh, put black on them and then wipe it off to give them more of an antique look. Uh, but you see, they've got flaws in it. Here's some depressions and extra metals. These would have probably been in the host scan or they could even be a flaw in the scan and they came up, they didn't bother fixing them. <clears throat> and they get that kind of a rough surface. There's quite a few articles on these. Here's this one that looks like it picked up a die crack from the from the scan. You know, more of the, the, the flaws, the die, die flaws. And I, I think when I first saw this one, I actually thought, oh, it could be cast. And then I, a further examination, it was just a bad scan. Here's one. This is the one of the later generations. Here we've got bubble digits because once again, they've got their die, their design and now they just want to do the whole series by changing dates you know just cut, copy the folder and then put a 77 
copy of the design and then they have the 78 and so on. This one's missing design elements. They, they looks like they may have enhanced it and missed it. This is all recut uh, in the digital process. And uh, maybe they misalign their dies, but clearly we've got the unevenness in the dies. We're going for a little bit closer look. Bubble digits. And you can see that this is uh, it has less of that EDM look and more of that etched look where they probably put some acid in there to kind of pump it up a bit. Uh, this is a fun one. This is uh, last, last week, actually. This went through a dealer group, uh, or it may have been the dark side counterfeits. Um, but uh, yeah. Fake coin that's definitely nowhere near a 68. Actually, kind of looked clean. Uh, and uh, yet, 68 holder. And it's a whole group of them. Even uh, notice they're doing the whole series and then they're popping them in fake holders. The holograms will be slightly different, uh, but it's really, it's look at the coin. This came out about 10 to, let's see, it's 2001, so maybe 15 years ago. This was one of the uh, super fakes. Scared people. Thought, wow, this is incredible. Well, really, it, it, it was a, a well-made piece, and, it, and, it's, and it's impressive, and it's got some power to it and everything. But compared to a genuine 81cc, it's not. It it's, doesn't look like one. It, it doesn't feel like one. But it, well, when they when they called it a super fake, they were saying it's just well, better made than most. Um, if you look at this piece, it it, it doesn't look like a CC Oppers. Uh, it's flat white. Uh, it doesn't have any of the luster we'd expect. It has a satiny luster. The rim looks a little sharp. Um, so they we probably scanned a CC Reverse, and they had probably had an eighty one uh, Obverse, and they paired them. Uh, uh, they just, and then they've been doing the whole series, and and I think uh, that picture earlier, where the with the with the person holding a handful of dollars in the very beginning of the presentation, this would have been one of those super fakes from about fifteen years ago. But if you look at the edge, the edge is not right. The edge is probably the most difficult part of the coin to reproduce. But these used to be called super fakes. Now they're not even given a second look. This is probably more correctly a super fake because this fools people. I have seen one very similar to this in, in a third party grading service holder. And from what I understand, they want it back uh, so they can get it out of the holder if they're willing to buy it. But uh, this one's a bit more believable. I mean, if this was put in a flip and just sitting there and the, the price was right, this would get people. If this was on eBay, uh, I think this would get people. Um, but it's an 81cc and it doesn't necessarily look like an 81cc. And 81s tend to have a lot more contact marks on them. Uh, this one looks antiqued. It's just too uniformly dark around the edges and stuff. It's got that flat, wishy look. It's a circulated coin, but it doesn't actually look like it actually circulated, um, which is hence why they antiqued it. Uh, you've got some issues in the rim, and you've also got a very sharp rim. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly got a neat look to it, but it's just not correct. And then, of course, one of the nice things about Morgan Dollars and Peace Dollars is that we have the VAM book which is the variety book. And if you look this up, you'll pair that, that obverse to an 81 obverse, and it probably does not pair with a CC reverse that the VAM would pair it with. Uh, so it's probably two, two different scans of two different coins. But this is better than most. I mean, they put some effort into that. More often than not, this is what you see. 
with the Morgan dollars. For whatever reason, they've got it in their head that Morgan dollars need to be circulated and chopped up and banged up. Uh, and this is how they come. There's, they've been making these pretty consistently for 30 years and they always look the same. Uh, they're either antiqued or not. This one was probably antiqued and then when it got here, somebody dipped it. Because this looks like dip burn. And all this, this is where that antiquing is etched into the coin and the acid burned it out and turned it tan. Looks like we have a hand-drawn date. Looks like we clearly have hand-drawn CCs. I don't go in for a close-up on that, but these are hand-drawn CCs. This coin has problems all over the place. I would have put it back down you know, just because of the, the burn on it. I hate that look. Um, and that's a coin I'm gonna own for a while. You can see the burn all over here. So it was antiqued and then dipped. So somebody had bought it and then uh, they put it in their collection and they decided at one point it would look better if it was lighter and they dipped it. And then that's probably when they realized it wasn't real. Okay, this is our older, older generation, just so we have a little bit of history here. It's an 81S, doesn't look anything like an 81 Obers. Um, and uh, it's got irregular fields and it's a very dull look to it. And the reason it has all of that and it probably has very bad tonal qualities is because it is how it all began with cast counterfeits. Here's all your pimples from casting. You know, you're going to have the loss of detail, the uh, bad tonal qualities, irregular surfaces, no dye flow, no dye polish. Uh, here's pimples. There should be some pits in here too. Um, but yeah, absolutely horrible. And these still pop up mostly on eBay uh, gun shows. You find these a lot at gun shows uh, and uh, estate sales and garage sales and flea markets. Now, this kind of goes back to that lake effect. You know, they, they got a scan of a nice coin. It looks like they may have drawn these in because they're bubbly. Uh, they just didn't bring out the relief. They didn't bring out the design. And so we have lake effect. And uh, we even looks like we have dishiness, uh, which is kind of a, a halo effect down here. We have the raised rim because they, they are convinced that even if the dye doesn't have the detail, by striking it harder, that detail will magically appear. Uh, and it just, it's not going to, it's, if it's not on the coin, it's not going to happen. And uh, how do you like that one? That, that's uh, an older generation. It's got the pimples, the pits, cast, and the antiquing. So if they dip this, it's going to be white with tan all around. And it's going to look even more counterfeit than that one does. This is a relatively recent product. It came out. Uh, it's just horrible. And it's been dipped. It was antiqued. And the Morgan dollars are almost and almost always antiqued. If they're not brilliant on circulated in appearance, which is a new thing, only the latest generations of Morgan dollars are brilliant on circulated like that. And PL, the older ones are always circ, and they're antiqued. Uh, that's because th their production methods are better, and they've realized that a, a hundred and something year old coin can actually look like it's brand new. They didn't realize that before. So here's this, and, and, and again, you see the dip burn. So it was antiques, and the guy puts it in his collection, then he dips it, and then he realizes, oh, he's made a horrible mistake. So Silver Eagles, they're doing them. Um, generally, they're not terribly uh, deceptive, but they, uh, they can. They are uh, often magnetic. Uh, some appear to have been plated. None appear to be made in full silver. So if you did do like a specific gravity test on them where you weigh it wet, weigh it dry, uh, which that article is on my website if you wanted to download it for free. Uh, if you did do a specific gravity test on it, it's probably going to come up in the eight nines. Uh, which is kind of more of a bronze alloy or, or copper alloy that's been plated, uh, or it'll come up as a white metal. Uh, if this was made in lead and plated, it's going to weigh a ton, and it'll have a specific gravity up in the 11s. 
but this this is um, this probably actually this came off of Ali Express, no Alibaba, and uh, and the same about the same time I saw this on Alibaba, there was an article on it, one at Coin World, um, and uh, they felt that it had been uh, silver plated. I think. So this gives you an idea of what we're up against and what we're seeing. And which is why, you know, if you want to learn what's being counterfeited, is it, look at it, learn it, uh, stay ahead of the curve. This, uh, you know, if this had, maybe it was a little bit darker and if it was in a, you know, a, a very cheap price or on eBay, this could probably fool you if you don't know gold. But this is where it came from, $1.58. Now, this should tell you right here that the guy making this is, is concerned more with, with sales and um, production. Uh, and then when it goes from here, uh, it goes to uh, a secondary market and that's when it gets put in a fake holder. That's when it gets artificially aged, although they don't need to do that to gold. Uh, and then it enters uh, eBay or Facebook marketplace. Uh, you find these on there. Uh, these, let's see if you can see them. These came from Facebook marketplace last month. Uh, these Perth mint ingots, which are fake. They're double thickness. Um, but this is uh, AliExpress. Um, and the, these are going to have very, very sharp edges. All the ones I've seen, you can actually see the reading coming up on the obverse and reverse of the coin. Let me see if I can find that on here. Yeah, here, here you can kind of see the denticles right here. They strike it with just incredible pressure. And then it actually, if they just struck it with less pressure, they'd be more believable. Um, now, you can put together a full set of two and a half and five Indians in Chinese made counterfeits, but guess what? You can put together a full set of struck counterfeits uh, of non Chinese made, uh, ones that you know, may have come out of the Middle East or, or the United States that meet men's specifications for, uh, for gold content and, and uh, fineness. Um, so these are popular little coins, uh, and they are not. not terribly difficult to authenticate either the ones that are made of gold or these which are probably made out of a base metal uh, they could even be a brass alloy um, I, think, I think some of the tungsten um, but uh, why stop there let's go on to this this obviously is not going to show up on the coin when it arrives and notice it's the same one the same copy that was on the uh Walking Lip Quarters or Standing Liberty Quarters, excuse me. Dollar um, eighty-eight. Okay, this guy's not looking to. The guy selling it on Alibaba is not looking at rip you off, but the secondary market, the guy who buys it from him, might be. That's why they're getting this stuff as it comes into the country because they know once it gets in the country, some crackhead uh, puts it, you know, goes around selling it, trying to pass it at pawn stores uh, because this. This uh, presentation is recording. I leave out those people's pictures, but we do have pictures from dealer cameras showing the people that are going around the country selling these. Uh, there's a, a band of gypsies that hit the Midwest that are selling, uh, is doing stuff like this. Uh, and uh, there's also any number of uh, crackheads and meth heads that are going around and, and, and duping old people, coin, uh, less knowledgeable coin dealers. And, uh, and the poor guys in the pawn shop are just getting hammered uh, with stuff like this. And they always come with a backstory. Like my grandfather gave this to me. Um, here's a pretty good, uh, this is probably circa uh, 2010. Uh, I believe they've learned since 2010 that these do not come PL or proof like surfaces like this. Uh, they just didn't know any better back then. So they were producing a ton of this and everybody was kind of laughing about it. Eventually they got rid of the PL surfaces and started making them look uh, more like they should. And they did become quite a bit more believable, but they don't have a, don't have a speck of gold in them. Uh, but actually, if you, if you can ignore the PL for a moment and you kind of just look at the design, that's not bad. 
that's not bad at all. If they tried harder, they could have probably produced a pretty deceptive coin, even the date. Yeah. But uh, the, your central figure is not, not bad. It's it. She's well done. The rest of the coin fails miserably. Okay. We're jumping a little bit ahead here. I'm missing a slide, it looks like. But uh, actually, it's probably a duplicate. Let's go forward. Big, wishy washy uh, brass alloy 10. It's just, it shouldn't fool anybody. If you, but if you compare it to a red book picture, you're going to be like, oh, this is horrible. This is the latest generation. This is the stuff that's coming in right now. And this is the stuff that we need to stay ahead of on the curb. Um, but this is what you most often see. Great PC holder, horrible coin in it. You know, this is not, I mean, it's off, but it's better than most holders. But this is, this is a disaster. The coin is so awful. But you got to keep in mind, people are buying all of these coins, all of them. All the coins that you have seen in the presentation today are being bought by people. Uh, you may feel pretty confident, but you are obviously, you're sitting here doing this presentation, so you're obviously a little bit sharper than your average bear. But there are people who don't go to coin shows, who may not have a coin store in their area. And whatever they buy, they buy off a mailing list or stuff like that. They might not even have a, a red book and they're buying this stuff. They're getting duped by it. Most of those coins I've seen on eBay. But this is how it's coming across. This guy is not making his money on counterfeiting. He, uh, he's making his money on, on quantity. Uh, and then, I mean, uh, he'll give you a million pieces a month, 300 pieces. This is Ali, uh, Alibaba. Uh, here's your buffalo. That's probably not, that might be the coin he's actually producing. It doesn't, it's not right. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing it all because they say, well, I can do that. And so they start making it. Oh, I can make a Louis Vuitton person like that. And then they make it. I can make, you know, I can make a drone uh, that's like the, the, you know, the really expensive drone, then I charge you a hundred bucks for it. And it's that can do attitude and not realizing uh, you know, how, how uh, it can be just uh, taken advantage of. Here you go from Shanghai, 50 pieces, minimum order, 100,000 pieces per month possible. You know, a cent, five cent, a cent. See, so the secondary market is where your problem is. So, and again, you know, this is your old antique Morgan dollars, pretty much the only way they used to come, but now they come brilliant white, you know, they look like sixes. This I think is a, a Facebook from last week. And the face is wrong. The style is wrong everything. And it's in a fake holder. Um, we've got a great one here. That I want you to see. Uh, NGC has a feature, I think PCJS has it too, where you enter the cert number and then it verifies the coin. Okay, so you can go on there and you can see a picture of the coin. So somebody had this presented to them that it came in their shorts, actually sitting on their leg and they took a picture of it probably with their iPhone and uh, they put it on, the, uh, on Facebook uh, in one of the dealer groups uh, asking for people's opinions. And somebody went and took that number, entered it into NGC, and NGC showed them a picture of the genuine coin. And also that there is counterfeits of that particular holder. A little bit disturbing. Usually these look a lot more gold. Some of it might be, the, they usually have that nice yellow gold look. This one, for whatever reason, doesn't. Uh, I haven't seen one in this color, this dull, this brassy look in a fake holder. Everyone I've seen in the fake holder has been more yellow, but her face is fatter and wider and she's not a, you know, not very good looking. So um, actually it's, it's this one. This is actually the genuine piece 
and this is uh, zombie liter zombie li uh, liberty. Um, she just uh, she's not doing well. And they, you can see where they've kind of enhanced the detail. Look, this is probably a brass alloy that, or a tungsten that's very bright, and they've uh, been able to uh, make it look more like the gold. This is more of the natural gold, but her design is, I mean, her fingers are kind of skeleton-like. Uh, her face is emaciated. Uh, yeah, she's awful. And obviously somebody knew it was counterfeit kind of, didn't care and they kind of banged it up a bit. But the eagle, look at his eye. Very cartoonish. As opposed to what the real one looks like. And that's just from them not enhancing the scan very well. It looks more like an M and an 8. So. And then there's our, our, our lovely zombie girl the fingers the enhance you can see where they've gone in and they've enhanced all these lines and that's how they look like on the earth they actually looks like hair here and it looks like veins on that one okay well they're also doing the ingots as i showed you earlier we have these two bad boys and then we have all of these which came in a couple of weeks ago but we're going to show you a few of these here. Here's a nice one, Atmex, one ounce. That looks good. Looks, looks nice. We weigh it. We see how it is. You know, they're probably going to come as close as they can on the weight. But we might find that there's other problems with it. And it's an, a base metal alloy. Maybe it's been plated, but then they broke it apart. When they, then they didn't pass the little x-ray machine, uh, they realized that it's not. And they're, they're, they broke it apart for, for all to view. Um, your ingots are typically going to be twice as thick as they should be. This is, uh, which one is this? Royal Canadian Mint. Okay. There is a website out there that goes into quite a bit of detail with weights and measurements, uh, which includes thickness. Um, and, and one of the things to note on this, which is kind of crazy, is this is their cert holder. This is their anti-fraud protect you, the buyer holder. It has a cert number on the back of it and the cert numbers are different. So they do have a way of producing them to where all of them have their own unique cert number so that you can't be matching up certs uh, and finding out that you know if you went and bought 10 of these and you looked at them and they all had the same cert number, well, that would be the end of that deal. You're not gonna buy it. So they figured out that we've got to at least make those uh, change over time and that's what they've done. Now, how serious is the counterfeiting? Well, in China, if you make a coin, if you counterfeit, they, their, their rule is it has to be an exact copy. Uh, where if here in the United States, it's in resemblance and similitude of that a reasonable person could re would assume would could be confused as it being genuine in China. If it it doesn't have, you could change the denomination on it, or you could leave off the Y for Yuan uh, and just have it say twenty five. Uh, but you get killed in China. They kind of have the right idea, in my opinion. Um, so. For them to make a set that's identical, every single coin in here is identical to the original, and it comes with fake certs. Some of these people that are producing counterfeits are trying to rip people off, and they're trying to rip off their own people because they put more effort into their counterfeiting their coins despite the death penalty than they do into producing ours, which is why Chinese counterfeiting is so complex. It's got so many different levels. And you go into a fancy factory uh, that's clean and, and the, the owners are wealthy and the people, the employees live in dorms. And, and uh, I mean, it's an impressive operation. And you find them making absolutely gorgeous gold ingots and, and, and all these 
gift and, and presentation type pieces and boxes and stuff like that. And then at the same time, they're probably making counterfeits on one of the other presses. So it's, it's a very, uh, it's, it's, it's a unique situation that we're seeing here. We're not like we've ever seen before. Most of our U.S. gold counterfeits that you need to worry about were actually produced in the 70s, 60s and 70s, which we talked about uh, in the presentation I gave yesterday. And those are designed, really designed to defraud the collector. And, and they started out as being uh, to where they could be used in the metals market, mostly in Europe. Uh, if you do go to Italy, you'll see that there are... Um, uh, currency exchanges and there's there's uh, twenty dollar saints in the window uh, and ten uh, ten Indians and all this uh, being sold for for melt for with regardless of condition date or mint mark uh, and a lot of our counterfeit gold actually started out that uh, for that market and then it ended up out here and getting defraud defrauding collectors and it only defrauds them when there's a significant premium above above the gold price. Um, but um, I mean, at one point, there were nine private mints in Europe producing gold sovereigns, British sovereigns. Um, so uh, the Chinese counterfeiting is, is, is a whole different thing. And it is really when it comes to that secondary market is when it becomes a significant problem. And, and I do recommend you take me seriously on do not go on to Alibaba or AliExpress or Wish and start buying this stuff because the odds are very good that you're going to get spanked. And uh, even to have someone investigating you for something like that. And I mean, you're thinking, oh, I just ordered six coins. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Yeah, actually, it will be a big deal. So you might want to take it seriously. So I think we can, uh, we can address some of these. That's the, uh, we're at the end on that. So we can address some of these and see which ones have we answered and haven't answered. Uh, do they ever strike them in silver? We already talked about that. Not that I'm aware of, but I do think some of them are silver plated after the fact. Uh, these guys are not, you know, they're, I mean, they're, they're selling them on AliExpress for, you know, less than a dollar. They're doing quantity, so they're not silver. But there's enough alloys out there that can replicate gold, silver. I mean, any alloy you want can be replicated, uh, believably. Uh, are any known individuals or Chinese companies minting high quality forensic copies? Uh, no emphasis on violence. Uh, I'm sure there's people that are making very high quality counterfeits. This Chinese set that we have here is 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 one very high piece, high quality copy. Um, but I'm not seeing for our market. I, I'm not seeing anything that I would think was being made like that. Everything I'm seeing looks like it's made in quantity and then it's corrupted once it's come here. Um, are you afraid you just might be educating the forger to produce better copies of the coins in the future? I don't think the, the forgers uh, uh, care. They, they are pretty confident in what they're doing, and uh, they've had, uh, they're, they're, they're going to improve based on uh, the technology that they have available to them. Um, some of the forgers, you know, if we had forgers here, you know, like Mark Hoffman, uh, you know, yeah, he, he would have probably benefited from uh, a counterfeit detection class or two. Um, but uh, uh, by and large, the people in Asia, I don't think it's going to affect them. They're, they're, these are guys that are just industrious and, and, and have a go get them attitude and just don't realize that, the, that, you know, collectors are paying thousands of dollars for these coins in the United States, genuine. You know, then they're just looking, oh, I can do that. And it's novelties and souvenirs that they're producing. I haven't seen anything, any fakes with a CAC sticker on it. Uh, and uh, I, I, I don't know which, I mean, I, I does seem like, or it used to seem like the, uh, I saw more counterfeit NGC holders than I did PCGS. And that was because NGC was really first and strongest in the Chinese market. Um, now I'm seeing both of them at about the same amount. As far as counterfeit coins in the holders, um, they, they uh, and not most of this Chinese stuff isn't making it in there. It's the older, uh, you know, date, mint mark alterations and stuff like that, that'll occasionally get it to the holder. But th that speaks more towards do it with a, a guarantee. 
uh, you know, NGC has a very solid guarantee. So does PCGS. I believe Annex and ICG also have strong guarantees, but look at it, make sure, because I haven't read it in a long time. Uh, if, it, if the certification service doesn't have a guarantee, it's just expensive plastic. And, uh, and uh, that, but buy the coin first too, and then worry about the grade on it afterwards. Um, the weights are all over the place. Uh, so much so I'm not even weighing that many of them anymore. I mean, yeah, the, 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 uh, the trade dollars are typically two and a half to three grams light, uh, but some of the quarters and stuff like that, they're, they're about, they're within mint tolerances. Um, and, I, and I have a hunch that's almost by chance that they are. Um, the, uh, you know, the, sometimes where you, the, the gold coins are all, I think most of the gold coins are light. Um, but the uh, the ingots they uh, they are larger in size usually because or thicker because they're not doing them in the same way. Uh, and actually, I think the ingots got started out when they were counting for the ingots. I think they were done, and they were the uh, maybe the Russians were having the ingots made because all the ingots I saw came out of uh, were from from Russian guys that I know. Uh, were showing me these things and uh, they were, were largely in New York initially. And then I think it spread from there that the Chinese now started selling them to people on the West coast or people on the West coast started getting them. But the ingots, I think were initially, uh, it was a Russian thing. Um, when a coin is put into a slab with no weight edge, difficult to see and no, is it, isn't it covering up many aspects to identify it? the higher quality replica. Okay, well, if these aren't marked, they're not replicas, okay? For it to be a replica, it has to be marked with the word copy on it. Um, uh, if you have copies of fake world coins um, in genuine NGC holders, um, you send a picture of it uh, send a picture of it to NGC, get in touch with somebody at their customer service and send them a picture. Um, if, uh, if they put a, a fake in their holder by mistake, they, they'll make it good. They'll, they'll buy it from you. They'll, you'll make you whole and, and everything. And they, they'll, they'll help them to kind of figure out where it's coming from. Uh, Well, that would be uh, if in the UK, they say the counterfeits uh, are always more detailed toward the edges and the center is is watered out. Um, well, that that would be depending on how they're making the counterfeits. Uh, I would say that you're probably looking at older counterfeits, uh, stuff that's probably written up in the International Association of Professional Numismatists reports, the IAPN and the uh, International Bureau for the Suppression of Counterfeit Coinage. Uh, they highlight a lot of those type of coins, and that's really just a production method. Uh, if they used impact dice, for example, uh, it's gonna have uh, strong central details and a, and a, and a weak uh, uh, washy uh, re, uh, edge. Uh, spark erosion is going to have granular devices and mirrored fields and, and sharp edges. So that's most likely a production method as opposed to uh, uh, a type of counterfeit that you're experiencing. Um, and some of the Chinese counterfeits are weak in the center and strong on the edge and others are weak on the edge and strong in the center. It's, uh, if it's Chinese counterfeits, it's more of their, of their actual rendering process, uh, uh, taking it from digital to uh, to die. Okay, what specific what's the specific grade for a modern silver eagle? Um, yeah, for that, uh, you're looking at. Uh, oh, I should know this right off the top of my head. Copper is uh, eight point nine two. Lead is eleven. You're gonna have to Google it, or if you go into onto my website. Uh, and you can download that article. And also there's articles on Chinese counterfeits on my website and you can download them. They're PDFs, they're free. Go right ahead. Uh, I believe I give you a list of specific gravities. Otherwise you could, uh, you could uh, Google the specific gravity for, uh, for silver, for 0.95 silver, because I can't think of it off the top of my head at the moment. 
Um, yes, Facebook. Wow, Facebook. Yeah, they're good at censoring everybody. You know, I mean, you make an inappropriate joke and you get 30 days in say, Facebook jail, but then they're running ads for a complete set of Morgan dollars for $19. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do they have the rules for buyer protection? Uh, the only way I think you're going to get buyer protection is if you buy it through PayPal. Uh, but basically, uh, uh, if you see a Facebook ad and the coin looks interesting, click on the ad, but then look at the, the, who's selling it, um, uh, when the delivery time is. If the delivery time is four to six weeks, okay, it's probably coming from China. If it's you know such and such bullion, uh, or such and such coins that, that might be a legitimate dealer in, you know, I don't know, Ohio. Um, try to figure out who's selling it. Uh, I don't do any business. I generally make a rule not to do any business uh, with people. I can't figure out who they are. So if I go to a website and I go to the about me and I get nothing but nonsense on it, I'm probably not going to buy any coins to them. But if I go there and I can put some names to the company, then I'll buy it from them. The exception, obviously, is eBay, but then you go off on feedback and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, always check out. I mean, there is no shortage of shady, shady people selling stuff on Facebook. Most commonly counterfeit coin. Well, no, it's a, the Chinese have complicated that. Uh, Prior to the, the excluding Chinese, the, the things that I would look for would be your 1916D and your 1909 SVDB Lincoln's end for the most faked. Um, yeah, and, and that mostly is, is uh, mint mark alterations. Um, there used to be a ton of US gold, but that's, that doesn't seem to be as huge of a problem as it used to be. Um, but the Chinese are doing all of it now, but the stuff you see most often are going to be the Morgan dollars, uh, or the, you used to see most often were trade dollars and Morgan dollars, but now that's starting to change. You're starting to see, uh, the Buffalo, uh, gold, uh, dollar. Uh, okay. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I have, uh, I do recall there being fake chop marks, um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll find a cast. I, I mean, I know I've seen other counter marks that have been faked. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me that if there's a, enough of a premium, somebody would fake it. Uh, I don't think the Chinese are going into that at this point because um, they probably view it as they would be counterfeiting a damaged coin. Because uh, I think the chop marks mostly uh, dealt with uh, Japan. Um, well, they're 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 keeping detailed records. They're they're monitoring. Uh, I, I heard that they're monitoring the uh, wish, and and to what extent they can, they're monitoring uh, um, AliExpress. Um, the, uh, the counterfeit, the anti-counterfeiting education foundation, um, and then, uh, um, the, uh, God, I can't remember the other guy. professional new specific guild. They're tied in with them. Uh, they're all keeping track of a lot of things that are going on and, and the, uh, the numismatic crime information, uh, service, uh, they're all, uh, making notes and they're making sure people are getting prosecuted. I just gave a talk, well, actually uh, last year before coronavirus, I gave a talk to law enforcement only uh, at uh, the Long Beach Convention. And I had, uh, I think we had Secret Service, we had Treasury, we had uh, um, FBI, uh, we had uh, law enforcement agencies from across the country. We had Pasadena police, uh, LAPD, LA County Sheriff's, I mean, uh, Customs and Border Patrol, we had them all uh, there. Uh, so local law enforcement is involved as well now. But uh, do that thing where you can, you know, you go into Google and you, there's a way that it automatically searches on your behalf certain things like counterfeit coins and, and, and then it sends you an update. I get an email uh, once or twice a day for anything counterfeit coin. 
And uh, I'm getting stuff from, you know, a guy in New Jersey who was passing off uh, stuff at pawn shops, just got pinched. A, a guy up in New England is going to look, he's looking at 16 years. Uh, you know, the Chicago is releasing the numbers for the amount of material they're finding in Chicago uh, coming into the country. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting. And then you do get a bunch of nonsense on there too. But do go to my website and download all the articles on counterfeit. Uh, and then also, if you go to the A&A library, they can put you in the right direction for articles on counterfeit. There is a Harry Bass uh, Index of searchable, searchable Periodicals. And if you, put in, uh, if you put in a search term counterfeit or narrowed it down to specific coins, it'll give you every article where that pops up. And then you can get copies of those articles. Uh, that's the Harry Bass Index of Searchable Periodicals, I believe it's called. Do we do that? Um, for it to be legal, it has to have the word copy as part of the die, and, I, and it has to be of a certain height. Uh, and that's as of the Hobby Protection Act, which was 1970s, and then it was revised uh, a few years back. Um, uh, if it has the word copy on it, uh, it's a noted copy and it's not, uh, it's, it's legal to own at that point. But the word copy is supposed to be part of the die, not punched into the coin. But you know, the best way to do it, to, to, I mean, if you really care about the hobby, the best thing to do is donate it to the ANA Museum. It'll go in their permanent collection. It'll be documented. It'll end up in this glass, possibly, or uh, when we are able to do hands-on. I mean, I'm dealing with, what, 300 counterfeits in that uh, in the class we teach at uh, Colorado Springs. And that's, that's going up. I'm hoping to double the size of the set because of all the Chinese stuff, but I'm trying to do it without getting arrested, getting it here to put in the set. Um, so donate, please, please. And you can take a tax deduction on it. Um, okay, yeah, many thanks. Uh, would it benefit the novice collector to go to coin show shops with a digital scale magnet metal detector? Um, no. Uh, if you start putting a magnet on people's coins, they're going to get mad. Um, the digital scale, most of your shops should have one. Um, uh, one, you want to establish a relationship with your, your local coin dealer, uh, unless he's a jerk. Uh, but find someone you can establish a relationship. Sometimes coin clubs are a great source of information, but they're also a great source of misinformation. So go in there and, and, and you know, I always say don't collect in a vacuum. You need people to to, to talk to, to, to share ideas. They'll teach you stuff, you'll teach Thea stuff, and you've got somebody to call you out too. If you're grading you know, consistently loose, that person's gonna tell you, no, you're not, no. So it's good to have that feedback. Uh, if you don't have that feedback, you're going, you have no one to correct you or call you out on stuff. But really all you need when you go to a coin show is, is maybe a, 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 I usually, I used to carry a three ring binder that had some of the tougher coins that I might not remember. Uh, the 22 uh, uh, week D or no D was always one that I could never remember the diagnostics for. So I kept a little piece of paper with the diagnostics on it when I was starting out. Uh, but a loop uh, is, it should be all you need. If you're doing ancient coins, maybe a scale is a little bit more appropriate. Uh, okay, can you elaborate on Morgan dollar silver coins? I see a lot of them in the Indian market just to catch the fake and refrain from um, that. That was where you could probably benefit from a, uh, a magnet, uh, but it's really gonna boil down to you really becoming familiar with the Morgan dollar. My guess would be the vast majority uh, if you're doing it in the Indian market, would be the vast majority are fake uh, at a scale. Weigh them and uh, maybe use the magnet. But I don't know if that's uh, uh, how effective that's going to be. Uh, purchased PCGS MS66 Morgan from Heritage. When I had it regraded at PCGS, they confiscated it. The holder was fake, but the coin was real. Okay, well, what it sounds like is maybe the holder had been tampered with. Uh, I 
I mean, there, there are instances, not, not too often with PCGS where you can reseal a holder. Um, it's, uh, I, I, yeah, the only time I've seen a genuine coin in a fake or a fake or an altered holder is when the holder has been uh, uh, altered. And that would be something that's done here. Um, you know, somebody managed to crack the holder open without damaging it enough. Uh, and uh, we're able to put a, a lower grade coin in. Um, but uh, I mean, Heritage took care of you and, and PCGS uh, got it off the market. So it sounds like everybody was probably, you know, maybe inconvenienced, but at least made whole again, uh, which is kind of what we like to see. And ICG holders counterfeited, I think most of them, most of people's holders are. They've they've counter. I've seen fakes of both the new and the old I, uh, annex holders. So I would imagine there's uh, it, if I don't recall seeing it actually, but I think that it wouldn't surprise me at all if they're out there as well. It's it's a level of what they see. If they see a lot of NGC holders, they're gonna fake them. If they see a lot of um, PCs, they're gonna fake them. They're, they're, it's you know just unfortunate, but that's the way it works. So I think that's it. Yeah, Brian, you're clocking in right at two hours again. Nice work. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, everybody. I hope you learned a lot. I certainly did. Brian's got his third presentation. He had one yesterday, one today. His third is on Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 29th. And that's going to be on counterfeit detection of key dates and mint mark U.S. coins. So certainly... Join us for that. It'll be another knowledgeable session. I'd like to thank the Gray Sheet again for the sponsorship of our eLearning Academy. Again, we wish that you were all here in Colorado Springs right now for the second straight year we've missed summer seminar, but please consider coming out next year. It's uh, certainly a one of a kind event. And yes, the uh, Belgian waffle maker is always nice over at CC Camp. Yes. So. <laughs> So again, folks, uh, join us for future uh, uh, e-learning presentations coming up. And thank you for su uh, supporting our program. Have a good day.